Hi guys. Hi Mary. Hello, hello. Thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. I don't have much of a voice because I have a cough, but I hope you guys can hear me well. How is everybody doing? Hi, hi. Hi, beautiful V. <coughs> good, good. I'm good. I'm doing well. Treasured for life. Thank you guys for joining me. Hey, hey, sis. Thank you for joining and inviting followers. That was an awesome 10 minute scope that you just did. So for those of you who are new to my scope, my name is Sarah from Trinidad. First time. Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Sarah from Trinidad and I'm a simple girl in a complex world writing diaries of purpose. I come on scope every day at six o'clock and I come on scope. Yes, you did. You did it in 10 minutes. And I come on every Monday at 6 p.m. intentionally to push you as I push myself to push past pain and passionately pursue purpose. And I am here to inspire you and to really spark that desire on the inside of you yes it's five minutes of fire to really spark that that desire on the inside of you to go after and to p pursue purpose you see you never know how what you don't know is impacting you until what you don't know becomes what you do know I'm gonna say that again thank you minister <laughs> You never know how what you don't know is impacting you till what you don't know becomes what you do know. Welcome all newbies. Thank you guys for joining me. And if you are here for the first time, I am Sarah. I am from Trinidad and Tobago. And I am known as the Giant Slayer simply because I slay every giant in the way of me accomplishing my purpose. And what a giant is, it simply is an abnormal situation that tries to scare you from accomplishing purpose. The giant is really somewhat like a mirage. Your giant in your life is like the devil. You see, the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion. And if you see those versions of cheap perfume in the dollar store, and those, those versions of the perfume say it's like Calvin Klein, or it's like Halle Berry, and it's like this one, because it's really an imitation. And that's what the Bible says about the enemy. He is like a roaring lion. So he's really an imitation of the lion. The true lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the enemy tries to bring giants in our life who are like roaring lions, but they are not really roaring lions. So what I say is, I don't play with giants i slay giants that's right and i want to encourage you to slay every giant that's in your life because a giant is really an abnormal thing that tries to scare you from accomplishing purpose a giant is that abnormal situation in your life that comes to intimidate you from walking out your purpose but i come here to push you and to push you to pursue your purpose with all your might we don't play with giants we slay giants and at the sight of giants just like david we know the power of the one who is within us you see we don't boast about our power but we boast about the power of almighty god because his power enable us to slay giants his power gives us the power to walk in his authority and slay every giant by the sword of the word that's right minister we slay giants and today i really want to talk about the price of your promotion can you guys put that up on the screen for me the price of your promotion the price of your promotion and this basically comes from the life of Joseph we are gonna look at the life of Joseph and how we can learn the price of our promotion and the first thing that we see that's right that's right the first thing that we see from Joseph's life in the price of his is his promotion is that Joseph moved from confusion to clarity. Can you guys put that up for me? From confusion to clarity. From confusion to clarity. You see, the Lord spoke to Joseph in a dream and he began to show Joseph that he was a problem solver because he could interpret dreams. Oftentimes, sometimes when God reveals that purpose on the inside of us, we seem to be 
confused or we are not really sure of what this purpose really is. So the first thing that we learn from Joseph is that he moved from confusion to clarity because when, when Joseph got the mandate that he was an interpreter of dreams, you see, we are created on this earth to solve a problem, but you can either do one of two things. Either you solve a problem or you create a problem. Which one are you doing today? Either you solve a problem or you create a problem. Thank you, sis. I see you have them going. My sis Carla Cannon is in here. So it's either one of two things you're doing. You're either creating a problem or you are solving a problem. And when Joseph, the Lord revealed to Joseph in a dream what he was going to do, Joseph was confused. He wasn't really sure of what his dream meant. You see, he had a dream that his, um, the sheaves of his brothers would be bowing down to his sheep and in excitement he ran to share his dream with his brethren but do you know that he was despised because of this dream and oftentimes the lord reveals our purpose unto us or he reveals something that he wants us to do a strategy in our lives and because of our confusion yes sis, he shared his dream prematurely we run and we go to share it with others because of our excitement and joseph did not share his dream out of arrogance but really he was so excited about the Lord speaking to him that he ran to share his dream with his followers, right? And went with his brothers. And when he shared this, this dream, he was despised because of the dream. Oftentimes, confusion could cause you to make the wrong steps. Oftentimes, confusion could cause you to make the wrong decisions. Oftentimes, confusion could cause you to have setbacks on the way of pursuing your purpose because you are not totally clear on where you are going, on where you are heading. You are just excited about the fact that God has inspired you, that you allow the confusion to take you out of that position where God has placed you. But today we need to move from a place of confusion to a place of clarity. How do you move from a place of confusion to a place of clarity? And before I go on, I want to ask you guys to invite your followers and please do so the hearts. I want to hit a goal of over 400,000 hearts today. So if you guys would be so kind as to invite your followers and to help me reach that heart goal today. But how do you move? You may be asking Asking Sarah, how do I move from confusion to clarity? The first way, one of the only ways that I know to move from confusion to clarity is in the presence of God. It's probably what, something that you were looking for more significant, but only when you come before his presence, then he can decode the very dream that he has put on the inside of you. Because oftentimes, he reveals his strategies, he reveals his plans, he reveals his purpose to you, but you are in a state of confusion just like Joseph and he is going to allow you good that's great sis he's going to allow you to move from a place of confusion to a place of clarity through prayer because purpose is found on the other side of surrender purpose is found on the other side of surrender and only when you surrender to God then you realize what your true purpose is I began today by saying you never know how what you don't know is impacting you till what you don't know becomes what you do know. I'm going to say that again. You never know how much what you don't know is impacting you till what you don't know becomes what you do know. But how does it become what you do know? You see, you have to pursue purpose. You have to run after it. You have to seek out information because only when you seek it, what does the Bible say? Seek and ye shall find. But somehow we feel that God is going to beam clarity from heaven. But he is not going to beam clarity from heaven because he said, Behold, I give you dominion. I give you dominion to thread. I give you dominion to thread upon what? To thread upon serpents, to thread upon scorpions. And nothing shall by 
any means harm you. You see, sometimes we got to slow it down because we are so accustomed reading the word like if it's a story that we miss. We miss simple points, right? But we have to pursue. He says, I give you dominion. Therefore, I give you power. I give you authority on this realm in the earth in your life but uh, you have to pursue you have to do something you have to activate that's right you have to get in a position of action because what do i say action leads to activation and activation leads to acceleration can somebody put that up for me action leads to activation and activation leads to acceleration so only when you take action and action really means that you realize that you have dominion you know when you take action when you realize that greater is he that is within me than he that is in the in the world only when you realize the dominion that is on the inside of you do you have the boldness to take action and when you take action automatically it pushes you into activation and then activation turns the wheel of momentum when you turn the wheel of momentum you begin to get into acceleration so that is how we move from confusion to clarity by seeking and pursuing clarity of vision get up and get moving that's right sis get up and get moving and this is how you move from a state of confusion to a state of clarity now when joseph brothers threw him in the pit so i started to do some research on pit and the dictionary says that a pit is a hole in the ground it says a pit is a hole in the ground my god i don't know about you guys but i get revelation out of every sentence that i research i get revelation out of every word of the bible i get revelation out of the news i get revelation out of everything yes keep sowing those hearts guys the goal today is four hundred thousand. so a pit is a hole in the ground so when I saw this, my God, let me tell you guys, the light bulb went on. And I said, but what is a hole in the ground? We make a hole in the ground oftentimes when we're going to sow a seed. My God, when do you make a hole in the ground? Can somebody tell me when do you make a hole in the ground? I don't know if you guys can see I'm getting excited about this word today. You make a hole in the ground when you are about to sow a seed. And his brothers through Joseph into a pit. The definition of a pit is a hole in the ground. My God. And a hole in the ground is where you throw a seed. So it means that by throwing Joseph into the pit. Thank you, sis. It means by throwing Joseph into the pit, what his brothers actually did was they were sowing a seed. My God. Did anybody get that revelation? Did anybody get that revelation? You see, you may feel like you are in a pit today right and you may feel that uh, your pit stop is your final stop uh, but while you're in the midst of that pit uh, a pit is defined as a hole in the ground uh, and a hole in the ground is what you make when you are about to sow a seed so what joseph brothers did is that they sow him as a seed into the ground my god and it was a seed of purpose uh, you see because i told you at first joseph was confused and he needed clarity Clarity. But he went from confusion to clarity to the pit, my God. And the pit is a hole in the ground. That's right. I am a seed in the ground. I think that's a declaration that we should say. Can you guys put that up on the screen for me? I am a seed in the ground. I am a seed in the ground. Because your life is a seed of purpose. Your life is a seed of purpose. You are a seed in the ground. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. So, we have to expect elevation but prepare for persecution 
I'm going to say it again because you guys know when I get excited, I start just rambling on. But I want you to be clear on what I'm saying today. And just like my sis Carla Cannon, I'm sweating over here. But I'm going to deliver this word, right? You have to expect elevation, but prepare for persecution. Can somebody scream that out with me? You expect elevation, but you prepare for persecution. You see, because when Joseph shared his dream, he expected that his brothers would celebrate with him. He expected that they would see what God was about to do in his life. He expected that they would elevate him, but he did not prepare. That's right, sis. He did not prepare for execution. He did not prepare for them to throw him in the pit. He did not prepare for them to despise the giftings that was on the inside of him. He prepared for elevation, but he did not prepare for the persecution that comes with it. The second thing I want to tell you today is the price of your promotion is persecution. The price of your promotion is persecution. Christ said that they persecuted him. So how much more will you you, a follower of Christ, have to go through his persecution. So the price for promotion is persecution. The price for promotion is persecution. That's right, JL. And you see, we have to change our perspective of the pit. So as I started to do this research on the pit, yeah, yeah, sis, yeah. We're going for 400,000 hearts, guys. So continue to sow and continue to invite your followers. Is this good or is this good? Can you guys give me a thumbs up if this is good today? Give me a thumbs up if this is good. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the pit and what the pit means, right? What our pit stops means. The pit is really a place of wow. Wow, thank you sis. Thank you apostle for joining me. The pit stop really is a place of transition. I told you that the definition of a pit was really a hole in the ground, right? And what is a hole in the ground? A hole is a place that you sow a seed. So when Joseph brothers threw him in the pit, what they really did was they threw a seed into the ground. And the pit really is a place of transition. The pit is a place of transition, right? The pit is is a place of turbulence. The pit is also a place of turbulence. The pit is a place of trust. The pit is also a place of trust because you have to trust in God to believe that he is going to pull you out of this pit, right? So the pit is a place of transition. The pit is a place of turbulence. The pit is a place of trust. That's good. Thank you for being at my note taker, sis. Welcome. Welcome. So the pit is also a place of trauma. Somebody put that up on the screen for me. The pit is a place of trauma. Because while you are going through your experiences in the pit, they are preparing you for the place of purpose. So the place is a place of trauma. But the pit is also a place of triumph. The pit is also a place of triumph because when a seed goes into to the ground, what happens? The seed dies, right? And in order for you to die, it means that you must go through transition. It means that you must go through turbulence. It means that you must go through trust because you have to trust in your heavenly father. It means that you go through some trauma. I see somebody saying that they are going through a pit right now. But let me let you know something today. Even as you are going through your pit, your pit is preparing you for your palace. And your palace is preparing you for your purpose. So continue to go through because your pit is also a place of triumph. Your pit is a place of triumph. So your pit moves you from transition, right? And when he came, when Joseph came out of the pit, right? There's some things that we have to avoid while in our pit. 
I see some of you guys saying that you're in the midst of a pit right now. Let me tell you what to avoid while in the pit. My pit is my place of triumph. That's right, sis. My pit is my place of triumph. And when we begin to change our perspective about our pit, because my God, I never thought of a pit being a hole in the ground. But as soon as I started to do the research and the Lord showed me the meaning of pit, my God, I started to scream to the rooftops. Hey, taboo, because I realized that when we feel like we are in a pit, it's really a process for our promotion. Your pit is your process for promotion. Your pit is your process for promotion. Your pit is your process for promotion, right? And this is what to avoid while you're in the pit. What to avoid while you're in the pit. And you know my sis Carla Cannon will say, you all say, tell me, girl, tell me. Tell me, girl, tell me. Tell me what to avoid while I'm in my pit. What to avoid while I'm in my pit. Somebody asked me to tell them, tell, them, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes, sis, I'm borrowing that from you. Tell me, girl, tell me. Tell me, Sarah, tell me. Tell me, girl, tell me. Yes. Your pit is your process to your promotion. That's good. <coughs> While you're in the pit, you need to avoid pity. Can you guys put that up for me? avoid pity while in the pit my god i don't know about you but i'm about to scream in this living room avoid pity while you're in the pit thank you for joining me apostle eckhart and for sharing my god avoid pity while in the pit right and as you avoid pity while in the pit it helps you to change the eyes of your perspective you must avoid pity while in the pit. <coughs> yes, sis, that is so much favor because we follow Apostle Eckhart, my sister Carla, and you. We follow your ministry. We follow everything that you do. I am even an affiliate in Impact, in Impact um, Network. So I am so blessed to have you here today. But while in our pit, we must avoid pity. You see, because pity will delay your process. Pity will delay your progress. Pity will delay your promotion, my God. Pity will keep you in the pit. Is somebody hearing me today or is somebody hearing me today? Pity will delay your process. Pity will delay your progress. Pity will delay your promotion. My God. So the number one thing that we must avoid while in the pit is pity. The number one thing you must avoid while in the pit is pity, right? <coughs> the second thing that you need to avoid while in the pit is procrastination. You need to avoid procrastination while in your pit because your pit is preparing you for your promotion. Avoid procrastination while in your pit. My God, wow, we have 460 live. Praise you, Jesus. So avoid procrastination while in the midst of your pit because procrastination is really a thief. Procrastination steals your blessing. Procrastination is a setback. Procrastination is really a trick that the enemy uses because he doesn't want you to get to purpose so he can delay your process by causing you to procrastinate and really what he does is he put things in your way that are not in line with your purpose to get you off track of what your purpose really is the enemy wants to distract you remember lucifer already has an end from the beginning and his purpose is the pit of hell but what he wants to do is to cause you to procrastinate so that he can rob you of your purpose and procrastination robs you of walking in purpose procrastination robs you of
of progress. My God, procrastination is a thief, right? And number three, the third thing to avoid while in the pit is pride. Avoid pride. Avoid pride. Avoid pride while you're in the pit. Somebody needs to avoid pride. You see, because you may think that you are higher than someone else. You may think that you are better than someone else. And sometimes pride is so subtle that we do not recognize it. I did a teaching on pride some weeks ago. And what I said, thank you, Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. And welcome all first timers. Thank you guys for joining me. But you need to avoid pride in, while you're in the pit. And what pride is, it means that you, pray, you place yourself on the throne of your heart instead of placing Christ on the throne of your heart. And that is the simplest way that I can say what pride is. It means that you're placing self on the throne of your heart instead of placing Christ on the throne of your heart. Let me break it down for you guys. If God has given you an instruction and instead of following his instruction, you are busy thinking about how would I look if I follow this instruction? How will they think of me if I follow this instruction? Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, that is pride because it means that you place yourself. It means that you place your desire. It means that you place how you would look and how you think and how you feel above the instructions of God. And that is pride. It means that you put yourself uh, as a throne, uh, ruling the throne of your heart, uh, instead of making Jesus Christ uh, the Lord of your heart, right? Uh, and that is how pride comes in subtly. Pride comes in subtly to try and deter us uh, from our promotion, uh, from our purpose. Welcome all the first timers. I see someone here from California. Bless you guys, bless you guys, bless you guys. So what are the three things that we avoid while in the pits. Can anybody tell me the three things to avoid while in the pit? What do we avoid while in the pit? While in the pit, we avoid number one, pity. Yes, we avoid pride. We avoid pity and we avoid procrastination, right? Is this good or is this good? If this is good, can you guys give me a thumbs up if this is good? You avoid pride, you avoid pity, and you avoid procrastination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the next thing that we can learn from the life of Joseph is that he moved from discomfort to destiny. My God, he moved from discomfort to destiny. Can somebody tell me that God moved? Help me say that God can move you from discomfort to destiny. He can move you from discomfort to destiny. And this is the lesson that we can learn from the life of Joseph because he placed that gift on the inside of Joseph to interpret dreams. And even as Joseph began to interpret dreams, the favor of the Lord was upon him. And because of the favor of the Lord upon him, God was able to move him from discomfort to destiny. Because if you remember the story, yay, we almost reached our target of 400,000 hearts. Bless you guys, bless you guys, bless you guys. If you remember the story of Joseph, after he came from the pit, uh, he was sold right to Potiphar. And then Potiphar cast him into the prison, right? Let me tell you what the tricks of the enemy are. They are no new tricks. I told you he is like a roaring lion seeking whom may, he, he, he may devour, which means he's just like those imitation perfumes. You know that those perfumes that say like Estee Lauder and like Calvin Klein and like this and like this. That is what the enemy is because he tries to copy the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remember, the devil cannot create it. He 
can only copy it. Uh, the only person with the creative power is God. Uh, and he put his Holy Spirit on the inside of us, uh, which means we are creative being. Uh, this is why the word says that death and life are in the power of the tongue because the Holy Spirit on the inside of you uh, is a creative being. Wow, that's amazing, sis. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, is a creative being on the inside of you. Uh, I like to say uh, that there's nothing new. The Bible says uh, that there's nothing new under the sun s-u-n right the bible says that in ecclesiastes there's nothing new under the s-u-n but my belief is that there is everything new in the s-o-n everything new in jesus christ because when you tap in to the power of his holy spirit that creative being comes on the inside of you and he allows you to move forward he allows you to create he allows you to walk in newness he says, Behold, I make all things new. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Therefore, he is moving us from discomfort to destiny. Because while Joseph was in while Joseph was in his prison, he used his giftings. In the midst of his prison, he was able to use the giftings on the inside of him. You are either creating a problem or you are solving a problem. So you need to tell me which one you're going to be from today. Either you're a problem solver or you are a problem creator. But we desire to be problem solvers because the inside of us is the Holy Spirit who is the creative being. Because when the Bible says in Genesis and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water and the earth and the spirit of God is a creative spirit so on the inside of you dwells the creator who would enable you to walk from death discomfort to destiny right so we're gonna talk about the prison now so the prison is a place of pruning so some people said that they feel like they're in a pit, but some of you today may feel like you're in a prison. Thank you guys for helping me reach my heart goal today. The prison, we just spoke about the pit, right? So now we see Joseph is in the prison. So the prison is a place of pruning. The prison is a place of pruning. Somebody put that up. Thank you, sis. Thank you, Carla, for putting that up for me. The prison, yes, it's a place of pruning, vessel 06. The prison is the place where God is pruning you for that platform of purpose. You see, oftentimes we despise our pit and we despise our pruning, but this is really our process and it's really the price that you pay for your promotion, right so there is pruning in the prison and it prepares you for your platform of purpose my god i'm getting excited sharing this message with you guys today the prison is a place of pruning. That's right, faith to succeed is where God cuts us. It's where he prunes us. And while Joseph was in the prison, he was, be he was being pruned because the gifting on the inside of him was being perfected. So somebody right now is in the perfecting process because even though you may feel like you're in a prison, your prison is where God is pruning you and it does hurt further. It does hurt but it's preparing you it's the price you pay for a promotion it's the price you pay for your platform of purpose the prison is a place of perfecting can somebody put that up for me the prison is a place of perfecting wow sis god is just blowing my mind today with this scope i just came on to share this simple message but god is just blowing my mind he's taking me from discomfort to destiny wow my god <laughs> So your prison is a place of perfecting. That's number two. The prison, hey Simone, thank you for joining me. Your prison is a place of pruning. Good, that's good, Delanese. And your prison is also a place of perfecting. Because while Joseph was in the prison, the Lord used him, the Lord used him to interpret the dreams of the baker. And he used him to interpret the dreams of the men who were in the prison with him. You see, because while you're in the prison, I'm reminded of Paul and Silas. And when Paul and Silas were in the prison, 
the Bible says, at midnight, they began to praise. And when they began to praise, and for those of you who are first time to me, what praises i definitely i use praise as it's really a prayer that you sing right so praising is a prayer i sing so they were praising god so they were praising god in song they were really praying in song at midnight right and the bible says that when paul and silas began to praise the prison began to shake right and i heard this pastor give an example and i laughed so hard because he said when Paul and Silas, sorry, he said when Paul and Silas began to praise, that God heard the praise like a music in the heavens. And he says that he is picturing God dancing because he says that the Lord says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool, right? So this pastor said that God began to dance. And as God began to dance, there was an earthquake on the earth because the earth was the footstool of the Lord. And I just laughed so heartily. I know he was just using it for us to get a real example of what praise does. But the praise began to shake the atmosphere of the prison. You see, because sometimes God uses your praise not only to set you free in your prison, but your praise can set your neighbor free in their prison. So it's important while we're in the prison to understand that perfecting happens in the prison. Pruning happens in the prison. And while you're in the prison, begin to praise because as you begin to praise, praise shakes the foundation of strongholds. Praise shakes the foundation of strongholds. And when your praise begins to shake the foundation, <coughs> my God, when your praise begins to shake the foundation, you begin to not only set yourself free. Hi, Monique. You begin to set others free. That's good prophetic release. Praise impacts. Praise shakes the wall of the prison. So while you're in your prison, it is a place of pruning. Your prison is a place of pruning, right? And the last thing. Your prison is a place of polishing. Your prison, God bless you, Iowa. Your prison is a place of polishing. Your prison is a place of polishing. My God, I wish you guys could just see a picture of God taking his cloth and just shining you like a precious piece of diamond, as a precious ruby. Yes, sis, you can have my notes. Your prison is a place of polishing because it's where God is shining you up. It's where he's preparing you to release you onto the world. You see, we are so accustomed with... with uh, are doing things so quickly that we despise the pit uh, and we despise the prison uh, but we are learning lessons from Joseph today uh, that even while he was in his prison uh, God was polishing him uh, and he was preparing him to shine uh, you know Rihanna says shine bright like a diamond well God is the best diamond shiner he is the best ruby cutter he is the best gold maker he is the best masterpiece creator because he is shining you and he is polishing you my sister's laughing at me he is polishing you in the midst of that very prison so i'm gonna repeat the three p's of your prison your prison is your place of pruning your prison is your place of perfecting and your prison is your place of polishing can somebody say that with me your prison is your place of pruning your prison is your place of perfecting and your prison is your place of pruning and right now you're in the midst of a season where you feel like you're in a pit or where you may feel like you're in, you're in a prison but i want to tell you today that that is the price for promotion let us take the lessons from the life of joseph and realize 
realize uh, that when we feel, uh, when we feel like we're in a pit uh, and when we feel like we're in a prison, it's really God preparing us for promotion uh, because it is the price of promotion uh, and promotion puts you uh, on the platform of purpose. That's good, Hilda. God is polishing you up right now. He is pro polishing you up right now uh, and your purpose is really linked to service, right? Now, the, the last thing I want to say about the life of Joseph, uh, the last thing I want to say about the life of Joseph, my God, thank you, JL, bless you guys, all the first timers, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, Apostle Eckhart, I so appreciate you coming on and inviting your followers, uh, my God. So the last thing that I want to say about the life of Joseph uh, is that it was a life of service, right? Joseph... The gift on the inside of Joseph to interpret dreams was, yes, Simone, that's right. Apostle Eckhart came on. Girl, Jesus is just doing it, right? The Joseph's life was a life of service. And let me tell you what the enemy is after. He's really after service, right? His battle is over service. If you remember in the Bible, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while they were thrown in the fiery furnace, they were really thrown in the fiery furnace because they refused to bow to a graven image. They refused to bow to any other God but the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Now, if you remember Daniel being thrown into the lion's den, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Bless you, Tony. Bless you. Bless you. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because the king made a decree. And when the king made this decree that they should all bow and worship this graven idol, Daniel refused, right? So this was all over worship. Now, when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted of the devil, what is one of the things that the devil said? He said, if you bow down and worship me, then I will give you all these kingdoms, right? Not knowing, I mean, he knew, but I don't know what he thought he would do, but he tried to tell Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, then you will have all these kingdoms, and these kingdoms already belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. So so the battle is really over our worship. The battle is really over us serving. The battle really is over us bowing because the devil desires and he craves worship. So anybody who is serving, he wants to get your attention off of the service to turn it to his worship and glorifying him because he is always envious of God receiving all worship, all honor, all glory, and all praise. So the battle really is over serving. Now what I want to tell you today is that uh, your purpose is linked to service. Uh, your purpose is really the gift that God placed on the inside of you to serve the world. Your purpose is the gift that God placed on the inside of you to serve the world. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Your purpose is the gift that God placed on the inside of you to serve the world. Therefore, I want you guys to get this revelation with me. Therefore, I told you that the battle of the enemy is over service, right? Therefore... If he hinders you from walking in purpose, it means that you are no longer allowed to serve the earth. It means that if he hinders you by, from walking in purpose, it means that you are not uh, delivering the gift that is placed on the inside of you to be delivered unto the world. On the inside of you is a gift that only you can deliver to the earth. But the enemy wants you to get discouraged in the midst of the pit. He wants you to get discouraged while you're in the prison because the battle is over servanthood. The battle is over service. The battle is over you serving the world because when you begin to serve the world and you begin to set others free, it means that you dethrone him from his place and he does not want you to dethrone him from his place. Yes, the replay will be up. He wants you to 
uh, to be sidetracked uh, from walking in your purpose uh, because when you don't walk in purpose uh, it means that you are not serving the world and once you are not serving the world what does the bible says uh, thy kingdom come uh, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven what is our bodies made of our bodies were created from the dust of the earth our bodies were created from dust right so when the word says thy kingdom come in earth it really means thy kingdom come in me on the inside of my life and then it can be manifested on the earth so the devil is battling battling you over service because your purpose is your service to the world your purpose is your service to the earth and he wants to hinder that purpose from coming forward in you so that that purpose will not come on the earth my god is this good or is this good today Thank you, sis. Thank you, sis. I am done. I am done. You can stick a fork in me. I'm done. Did you guys enjoy this message today? And to all my first timers, I just want to welcome you. I just want to welcome you. My name is Sarah. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, also known as the Giant Slayer. And what qualifies me to talk about purpose is because, like some of you, I have lived a life where I had no purpose. I had no idea. Identity, but my purpose was found on the other side of surrender. You see, God took me to a humbling moment uh, where he allowed me to fall flat down on my face. Uh, and it was in my prison, it was in my pit uh, that I paid the price uh, for promotion. Uh, that I am still paying the price uh, for purpose. Uh, that I am still paying the price uh, to give my gift uh, that is placed on the inside of me uh, to the world. Uh, and Periscope is one of those platforms that I use uh, to give that gift uh, unto the world. Uh, so I bless all of you for, for joining me today. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Yes, thank you, Miss Aretha. Thank you for his response. And every morning I do a devotional at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Five minutes of fire every morning at 6 a.m. I do a five minute devotional to fire start your day. So those of you who are here for the first time, feel please feel free to follow me and please feel free to join me from Monday to Friday every morning for five minutes at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. What was your number one takeaway from this session today? Thank you, JL. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, April. Bless God. Thank you, Tito. <coughs> sure, <coughs> sure, Simone. Team Sarah. Oh, thank you, boss lady. Welcome, Smith. Margarita, your first timer. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. The battle is over service to the world. Good. My purpose is my service. Good. The prison is a place of pruning. That's good, vessel. Be focused on your purpose. Satan is trying to steal my gift of service. That's good. Yes, yes, yes. And you guys, one of my sis, Simone, asked. She has a conference call on tonight. She just uh, mentioned. Simone, can you put the information up for them so that they can join your conference call tonight? Uh, Thank you, Prophetess Angela. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Thank you, Tabu, for that prayer. I still have the cool guy. My, my, my devotional is 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's just for about five minutes every morning. But I usually go like 10 minutes because when the Holy Spirit starts to stir on the inside of me, I could just run on. But it's really 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, five minutes of fire. Confirmation on service. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Dethrone the devil. Awesome. You see why I'm, I'm sister Carla. Good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Carla is my sis. Carla is my sis. God has allowed us to connect. And from day one, it has just been a dynamite connection, a dynamite explosive connection. 
and you guys can feel free to email me my email is purpose diary purpose d-i-a-r-y at gmail.com the email is purpose diary at gmail.com good i see somebody's looking forward to five minutes of fire awesome the prison process brings promotion. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Simone, for putting that up there. Purpose Diary at gmail.com. We also have a community on Facebook called Purpose Diaries. You can follow me on Facebook at Purpose Diaries. And if you like anything that you have heard here tonight, feel free to email me at Purpose Diary at gmail.com. And make sure you go over to Facebook and to like my page. So this is Sarah from Trinidad, the Giant Slayer. And I am pushing you as I push myself to push past pain and passionately pursue purpose. I am just a simple girl in a complex world writing diaries of purpose. But I come to inspire you and to push you to pursue purpose with all your might. See you guys at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for 5 Minutes of Fire. Bless you all. Bye-bye.